All the dogs and cats went up the hill, behind the village, before the tidal wave came. I guess they could sense it, and the older people were telling us to watch the uh, water, the ocean in front of us, and if it started making a big whirlpool out there, then we should start heading up the uh, hill behind the village. Staigute! Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. On today's program, we'll hear from Alaskan native Don Shugak as he shares what life was like growing up in the village of Old Harbor. This and more as we listen to The Storyteller. My name is Don Shugak. Uh, I was born in 1950 in a village called Old Harbor, Alaska, on Kodiak Island. Uh, I'm Sukhipiak from that area, which is uh, Aleut, uh, from, from the chain there. And uh, my mom and dad grew up in a village called Eagle Harbor on the island. And that village is... Uh, abandoned. If you were to fly over today, you would see uh, holes in the ground where uh, old parabras were, the old mud houses that they used to have when they were growing up. They moved from Eagle Harbor to Old Harbor where I was born in 1950, December. I grew up uh, knowing what it was like to live in the ocean, live on the ocean, and live from the ocean. I was very young when I learned to hunt for seal and bear, go halibut fishing, get crab and clams, different types of mussels and sea urchin. Of course, we had our own names for those when I was growing up and in our uh, Sukhbiak language. A lot of our culture was lost because of education and religion that came in banning the uh, culture of the Aleut people down there. There were a lot of times, uh, even now that I miss that old type of life where you'd spend all the time in the woods and out on the ocean, uh, kind of an ocean person, that's what the way I grew up. So I fished and I hunted off the ocean there. Summertime we'd go out and get uh, seagull eggs in the springtime, you know, and harvest seagull eggs and crab. It was a neat, neat place to grow up. Missionaries came in to Old Harbor when I was very young, and I think they were there before I was born, but my mom was the first one uh, that understood the message of the gospel. And she came to know the Lord in a village where, because of the uh, interaction between the uh, larger culture and our culture, there was so much turmoil and upheaval that there were a lot of times when the village was, you could just call it dark, where alcohol took over and all the abuse and all the domestic violence and neglect of children all, all took place. And we were part of that. My dad would uh, also uh, drink and he would... Uh, There'd be a lot of violence when he did that. And so we grew up under that, like uh, just about every village in Alaska did. And so there were a lot of problems came out of the villages because of that. And we're battling that today. And we're trying to find answers to those things. And in my life, I uh, found out that God is the only answer for that, and uh, he gives us the answers in the Bible. And a lot of times uh, we don't pay attention to it because we don't think it's real, because of how the gospel came into our world and our culture, and 
and it came in such a way that uh, uh, just blew our culture away. And so there's a lot of bitterness toward uh, Christianity. But the truth in the God's Word is, is what changes people. And that's what changed my mom's life. And uh, my dad's life, eventually, he came to know the Lord, probably around 1959. And the interesting story about that is that I was a missionary. That dad was building a house and uh, a frame house. And he said that uh, the missionary would come and help him. And dad was a Russian Orthodox lay reader in uh, our old church. And he really didn't want to hear anything that the missionary might say. So all the missionary would do is come over and help him and uh, work with him. And then once in a while, he'd quote a scripture verse. And that scripture verse uh, hit Dad's heart. And uh, he realized that the Word is pretty strong. Word is God's Word is pretty powerful. And not too long after that, he came to know the Lord. I probably came to know the Lord uh, when I was 12 years old under a missionary called Violet Abel. And uh, back then, I had gone to a sewing class that she was putting on for uh, the women in the village there, and I had to ask my mom a question, so I went in there and I saw at the back of uh, the chapel that they were at, a uh, panoramic view of the Bible. And I understood the whole plan of God's uh, creation in this world. I saw the beginning of it, and I saw the end of it. And it made sense to me, and in the middle of that was the cross of Jesus Christ. And I understood the love that God had for me then. When I looked at that panoramic view of of the Bible and God's plan for the time that we live in. Uh, it was really nothing uh, new. What was missing to me, and I understood it at that time, was the personal side of God's reaching out to me. And I saw that in this uh, plan that he had in the Bible, that the cross was a focal point for reaching out to me, that he sent his son for Don Shugak. And the reason he sent his son for Don Shugak is because he wanted to bring him back. And uh, in some cultures, and I believe uh, our culture was kind of that way, was there was no understanding of, of sin. Um, it was whatever you did was part of everyday life, that it just that it just happened that way. And things were accepted that way. But there were certain things that you didn't do when you were growing up. And those things we called wrong, those things we called bad. And there was an understanding then that, that we had that uh, we weren't good people all the time and so when Jesus came down and this is God who was clean and pure and didn't do anything wrong he came down and all my badness was put on him and he took the punishment for that badness for me for Don Shugat he took that punishment so that he could give me his goodness and I could stand before the Father clean. And uh, that, just, that just brings tears to my eyes that God would do that for me. What a profound thought that a God of all this creation, everything that we see around us, this huge God and, and you look at the universe and earth is such a speck in the rest of the earth universe and yet he sent his son to 
die for Don Shugak and try to bring him back to himself. To me, that's a profound thing. If he could do that for me, I couldn't do any less but turn my life over to him. So I did. I went back home and, and the Holy Spirit had been talking to me. And, and I didn't understand it then. I didn't understand what I was doing, but I, I felt like I had to talk to God. So I went to my room and got on my knees and I asked, God to come into my life and be a part of it and I didn't understand then what what I had done but I could look back now and I'm 53 years old and I could look back now and see how God has led me all those years in my life and it's been a it's been a ride with the Lord back in um, March of uh, 1964 the 27th of that month, we had a catastrophe hit the state of Alaska, and it was called the biggest earthquake, I guess, that we've ever experienced up here. And it caused uh, huge devastation to the city of Anchorage and to the coastal communities because of the tidal wave that followed after. And I was part of that in the village of Old Harbor. A tidal wave came and uh, wiped out the whole village. I remember when the tidal wave, the earthquake came, all the dogs and cats went up the hill behind the village before the tidal wave came. I guess they could sense it. And the older people were telling us to watch the uh, water, the ocean in front of us. And if it started making a big whirlpool out there, then we should start heading up the uh, hill behind the village. Well, we were a little too slow and everybody started yelling that something was happening and there was a village ahead of us called Kaguyak who had been hit first by the tidal wave. The first wave came through there and then it was receding going back out and three guys went down to a radio shack which is how the villages communicated then. It was a radio shack and it still was standing, so they called Old Harbor and told them that there was a tidal wave coming. Well, we'll have to wait till next time to hear the rest of Don's story, but we hope you get a sense of how important it was what God did for him. Don said it brings tears to his eyes when he considers how Jesus took the punishment for his badness so that Jesus could give Don his goodness, and as a result, Don could stand before God the Father clean. It really is an amazing thing. The Bible explains it this way. God made the one who did not know sin, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us, so that in Him we would become the righteousness of God. My friend, if you'll put your trust in Jesus Christ, He'll make you clean too. Want to know more? Visit our website, withoutreservation.com, and click on the tab, New Life. You can also write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877 766 46 Four, eight. We're also on Facebook at Without Reservation. Missed a program or want to listen again? You can download our app and take the storyteller with you. Thanks for listening, and remember the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's more to Don's story, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.